In this video, we're going to go over a galvanic cell. So we do know that a galvanic cell is a cell that involves conversions from chemical energy to electrical energy. So in some textbooks, a galvanic cell may be referred to as a vortex cell. So whenever you say vortex cell, just know that you're talking about a galvanic cell. Okay, so to start with, uh, we do know that in a galvanic cell, we need to understand that it's a spontaneous reaction. Of course, we said it's a redox reaction. So it's supposed to be a spontaneous redox reaction, which means that there's no need of us using any current. It is also going to happen on its own. Okay, so electrons will be able to move on their own. Okay, from one reactant to the other in a redox reaction. So a spontaneous reaction, the standard cell potential is going to be positive and the Gibbs free energy is going to be a negative. These are the things that we need to understand for a galvanic cell. So before we can move any further, we need to understand how we get to calculate what we call the standard cell potential. So now, as a student who has reviewed a galvanic cell, you need to be able to tell whether a galvanic cell may function or not by looking at the standard potential standard cell potential from the standard cell potential you should be able to tell because remember we've said it is supposed to be spontaneous so now we always want to make sure that when we calculate our standard cell potential it's supposed to be a positive and if it's not positive then it's not going to work out okay so now these are what we call the reduction potentials these ones that are attached to these are reactions they're referred to as reduction potentials so there's a table of reduction potentials. You don't have to master them. So these are the reduction potentials. So now, why are they called reduction potentials? They're called reduction potentials because if you notice, if you've noticed, these reactions are all written in form of what? Reductions. So it's up to you now to be able to separate and by looking at what you've been given to see which one is going to be oxidized and which one is going to be reduced. As things stands now, what we want is to get a positive standard cell potential. So now, whenever you get to reverse a half reaction, the sign of the reduction potential changes. Okay, so that's one thing that is very important. Now, assume we reverse the second, the second half reaction. So it's going to be positive 0 0.23 volts, and that would mean that this will now become our reactant. And our reactant to become a product. Okay. So this is what we are saying. Okay. And then we'll have our two electrons there. So this will imply this is now an oxidation reaction. And what you've noticed is I've changed the reduction potential has become positive. Okay. Now is it feasible? Is it going to work in such a case? So we can create the standard cell potential by basically adding the reduction potential and the oxidation potential if if a term does exist but i can say we had the reduction potential of an oxidation reaction and also for the reduction one so i'll get my negative 0 0.76 and then i'll add the 0 0.23 so you're going to notice that this is still going to give us the negative value okay so now try to perform a calculation there and see what you're going to get so you'll be able to understand that this is not a feasible reaction because minus 0 0.76 plus 0 0.23 is going to give you what? A minus 0 0.53. So this is not, it's not possible to have such a galvanic cell. So which tells us to say that we're supposed to do the opposite instead. What are we going to do? We're going to reverse the first one. So we'll reverse the zinc reaction so that we have the solid on the left and then we'll have zinc 2 plus just two elections are. So what you have is now a positive 0 0.76. This is very important each time you are calculating the standard cell potential. Okay. So you just have to add what you have now. You have your 0 0.76 plus a minus 0 0.23. Okay. So in this case, you'll notice that now your result is going to be what? Is going to be a positive one. Okay. 0 0.53 so now this galvanic cell in this kind of a setup is feasible it can work okay so that is how you can create your standard cell potential when you're given a reaction so it's up to you to know and to understand which one is going to be oxidized and which one is going to be reduced
each time you're given two half reactions. Okay. Now that we know how to go about that, it is also very important for us to understand that we can also call our standard cell potential or our cell potential to be uh, our cell potential can also be called EMF, which is electromotive force. Okay, and that's why it's measured in volts. Okay, so this is basically just the force that is putting electrons from one side to the other side. That putting force that makes it possible for electrons to move in a galvanic cell. Remember, we said this is the basic setup of a galvanic cell, where we have electrons moving from one end to the other. Okay, so now. Why we are calling it the standard cell potential is because standard cell potential is measured at what standard conditions at 180 m. So take note these are the standard conditions: one molar concentration and also 298 kelvins or 25 degrees Celsius. So these are just the conversions between kelvin and degrees Celsius. So any of the two is okay. So these are the standard conditions that we need to take note of. Okay. So now that we know how to deal with a standard cell potential, we should be able now to convert a galvanic cell that is drawn, given in terms of uh, the reactions, and be able to present it in what we call line notation, which is also called short and notation representation of a galvanic cell. Okay. So equally, if you look at the given reaction here, so it's also possible to have a positive reduction potential, as we can see. The reduction potential of the standard reduction potential of copper 2 plus is a positive. So now, what are we supposed to do for us to determine which one is going to be oxidized? So now, equally, we need to make sure that our standard cell potential after reversing a reaction is supposed to be positive. So if we reverse the one that is down, it is very obvious that everything will remain negative and it is not possible to have such a galvanic cell. So, alternatively, what we can do is reverse the one that is on top, right? So that we get to have what? A positive cell potential. Standard cell potential, that is. Okay. So, now, one thing that you also need to understand is, that I've not talked about is, it's also possible to have a case where one half reaction may have a single electron. And in such a case, you would need to balance up things. Now, let's assume, let's take an assumption to say, maybe if we had copper 1, for example. So, if I had a copper 1. You've seen that there will be a single electron there. And we said in an, in an electrochemical reaction, the number of electrons being lost is supposed to be equivalent to the number of electrons being gained by the other reactant. So in such a case, we would have multiplied the reaction on top by a 2 so that we balance the number of electrons. Every reactant and every product was going to be multiplied by 2. Okay. In a case, this is just the same way we used to work out with simultaneous equations. So now let's assume if we had the 3 there as it stands would have to multiply the one on top by a 2, everything by 2. So that the electrons will become 6, and that would be 2, and then the other one multiplied by 3 would be something that is going to come out that way. So at, at the end of the day, you have an equivalent number of electrons. So whenever you do multiplications, what you need to understand is the standard cell potential remains, or the standard reduction potentials will remain the same. Okay. So that is just necessary when they want you to come up with a balanced chemical equation for the given half reactions. Okay, in a case where they just want you to calculate the standard cell potential, it is not necessary because these ones don't change. They only change signs when you reverse the reaction. So as things stands now, our standard cell potential is going to be the addition of what we have. So 0 0.34 plus 0 0.76 will give us a standard cell potential which is 1.1 volts okay so this is our standard cell potential at 180m one molar concentration and 25 degrees Celsius to 298 Kelvin okay so now how do we get now to convert this reaction into a line notation so we've, we've seen the actual way in which it's going to be presented okay so now our balanced equation will involve us combining these two. So these electrons are basically on opposite sides, so we'll cancel them out. And then we'll drop our reactant. So we have copper 2 plus, plus what? Plus zinc, solid. And giving us what? 
this is giving us a zinc 2 plus and then we also have copper solid <coughs> so I'm going to use to erase the top part to just help us see what we can do there okay so one thing that you need to understand is we're always going to show our anode on the left hand side in our line notation okay we're always going to so to show it on the left hand side so in this case we do know that basically the anode is basically the one where oxidation occurs in a galvanic cell so which, which reaction is an oxidation reaction it's the second one right this is why it was necessary for us to understand or be able to identify which one is going to be oxidized because we need to show that on our line notation so zinc solid and we always show the electrodes on the leftmost and the rightmost so knowing that we on the left side we are having the anode the electrodes basically when you have this kind of half cell in a setup where you have a galvanic cell like that this is what we call the electrode so electrode makes it possible for conversions of the current for it allows the electrons that are coming from one end to be able to interact with what the solutions in which it's placed so we always want to make sure that the electrode that we have is in solid what state so that is what we're going to be putting on the leftmost so if you observe our oxidation reaction the solid that we have is zinc okay so now we use lines like this one to separate different states okay that's what we need to know so we'll separate the electrode from what is in our solution in our solution there ladies and gentlemen we're going to be having what solid we're going to be having aqua states and in this case what we have in aquas for our oxidation reaction i'm sure you're able to see that what we have is what it's zinc 2 plus so I'll put zinc 2 plus okay now when you are done with uh, with one side that is for the anode the oxidation reaction we put two lines instead of putting one we put two so these two lines now on a short annotation denote what we call now what what we are calling a sort bridge so very important for us to note that so this is what we're calling a sort bridge okay and then the other side as you might guess i said on the light most we need to have what we need to have the electrode for the reduction of reaction so it's copper solid at the end there so in between as you might guess it's supposed to be what what is in the solution which is copper 2 plus in aqua states okay very simple no? so this is very simple for you to do it and very easy for you to follow up okay so now let's try to review a case where you don't where you may not have an electrode let's say you have two this is these are our reactions okay giving us hydrogen so you notice that in this reaction there's no solid how do you get to approach such a question so now let me put another one for the sake of us being able to understand how we approach such a question even when they want us to do perform our calculations so we have zero volts as our reduction potentials for these two half reactions shown respectively on the right part there okay so now we need to first of all understand which one is going to be oxidized and which one is going to be reduced our major goal is after reversing we still want to have a positive value so we do understand that reversing the zero there the, 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 the top reaction will not change anything but if we try to reverse the one that is on the bottom our standard cell potential is going to be a negative so it is fully dependent on the second one right it has got a, an effect so we, we are not supposed if we change this one it will be a negative answer if we leave it the way it is it would require us to change the other one which is more favorable right so we'll reverse the one on top so that we have hydrogen gas giving us our hydrogen ions in the solution plus two electrons so this is interesting because we don't have a solid so what are we supposed to put on our electrode okay so the standard cell potential can be calculated by you just adding the two which will just be 0 0.34 and then what else are we going to do now we are more interested in how we get to come up with our line notation 
in such a case. So as I said, we'll start with the oxidation reaction on the left. Now, notice that in what we have, we don't have a solid. So an electrode is very, very cardinal and very important in a galvanic cell. So therefore, what we're going to use instead is what? We're going to use non-reactive metals like platinum and lead. So we'll use platinum in this case. So I'll put platinum as our electrode. And that is why I had to give this example because it's very, very important to understand that you can use platinum as well. And then I said, after you've shown what is on your electrode in the oxidation reaction, what are you going to do again? You need to put something else as well. Now, what do we have in this case? So I'm going to show these other things that are remaining with the hydrogen gas and the hydrogen ions. So if these guys were in the same state, if let's assume even what is on the left was in aqueous, I would have just put hydrogen, aqueous, and then I would have separated them using a comma, and then I would have shown the hydrogen ion that way. That's what we do whenever they are in the same state. Now, it seems these guys are in different states, so I'll still use a line to separate them. So I'll start with the hydrogen gas, and then I'll still draw a line because they are of different states, and then I'll show the other guy there. So, okay. So we have the hydrogen what? The hydrogen ion there. So let me show it. So we have the hydrogen ion in aqua states. And then the other side, what do we expect to have? So I'll put the salt bridge there. Why the salt bridge? Because we are done. And then the other end, what do we expect to have? The other end, as usual, at the rightmost, we're going to show what? We're going to show what is on our electrode. In this case, it's copper solid, right? There is it to follow up, and this is just going to be copper two plus aqueous state. So you've shown everything. The the most the, the only unique thing about this one is what we have is um, is we have what we have this kind of separation, and then we didn't have a solid a reactant in our reaction. So it was the necessity of us looking at this was how do we get to approach it? Okay. So that.